So I was right. Dr. Wilson deliberately fabricated the results of the autopsy to implicate my father. <laughs> An extra you? Well, I'm used to those. That that really did throw me off for a second, seeing seeing that spelling. I am disappointed, Council. That argument is nothing more than speculation. What? Dr. Wilson was Britain's leading authority on forensic science and autopsy work. There is no scientific basis on which to doubt the man's expert opinion. Pardon the interruption, my lord, but... Damage to the mucous membranes of the throat is easily identified, even in living subjects. Using a device called... Uh, pff. When, when, when was the endoscope invented? I think they may be messing with history here and saying that the endoscope was invented sooner than it really was, I, I guess. This is purely just a guess. Using a device called an endoscope, recently demonstrated in practical use in France. I want one. The government can pay. I don't think so. And Dr. Gorey, rest assured that your removal of evidence from the stores without permission will not go unpunished. Ridiculous 1855. They were still freaking rubbing leeches together back then. They didn't have the automatic leech warmers. They'd warm them up through friction. Friction. <laughs> we open up the dead to find the truth. I beg your pardon. But Mama, she chose to stitch her corpses up with all her secrets inside. That's wrong. Sorry, what chigao yo? Doctor Gory, it's looking as though. She has chosen to walk a different path to her mama. <laughs> yes, the ring. What about the ring? I've just remembered something. An earlier incident. What incident? The one, one I recounted to you before about a memory I have of Genshin Asugi saving my life. What? My, my father saved your life? It was ten, ten years ago on a foggy night. I had accidentally swallowed Genshin's ring and done horrible damage to my mucous membranes, and then he saved me. <laughs> faded, faded, a fellow automatic leech warmers fan. <laughs> Welcome. Genshin and I were walking down some back streets at a late hour, all of a sudden. Don't make a peep, you're coming with us. All of our assailants were armed with pistols, their faces obscured by scarves. Bang! The next thing I knew, there was silence all around. Genshin lay on the cobbled street. Blood was seeping from his left hand. He had shielded me. And then he cried out, I need healing. <laughs> it was on the ring thing. Wait, did the, did his finger get shot off or something? It was on the ring finger of the left of his left hand that he used to wear that ring. Uh, uh, are you saying? I've always believed those thugs were after me, but now I'm starting to question if perhaps I wasn't the intended target after all. W wait, but Genshin was arrested too. 
two days after that attack. And in that short interval, the decisive evidence needed to indict him was miraculously found. You mean the ring was stolen from him? You think that's what those thugs were after that night? Objection! You pathetic coward. You expect me to believe that you weren't involved? What do you mean by that? It was you, wasn't it? You're the one who took it. You stole my father's ring. You set the whole thing up so you could paint him as a mass murderer and have him arrest. Cosmo. Open your eyes. R you know, Ske? You must know deep down. The truth can be completely obscured even when your judgment is only slightly clouded. But at the moment, you seem to be floundering through a dense fog. Is that why you were so insistent that you go to London? Because there's fog there? Is that why you were so insistent I should be present in this trial? To see you like this? <laughs> well, this is an amusing spectacle. What a grandiose expression on your face. As if you were Lady Justice herself. It seems you've thoroughly convinced yourself of this alleged fabrication of the autopsy results so much that you're so much so that you are apparently blind to the blatant contradiction that would be born out of it what though it's extremely hard to believe let us imagine that there was some misconduct during the autopsy if that were the case why would asuge not have disputed the findings in his trial oh In the closed court hearing ten years ago, the defendant never once denied the claims against him. Isn't that right, Lord Van Zeeks? Yes, that is indeed correct. Upon hearing the verdict of guilty, he merely closed his eyes, quietly accepting the judgment. The actions of a man who has accepted responsibility for his deeds and is resigned to his fate. But, but then... Oh my, that is very strange. If Mr. Asuki did nothing to oppose the charges against him, then... That would surely mean there was no fabricated evidence. An obvious conclusion at which you should have arrived many minutes ago, Prosecutor Asuki. Your twisted loyalty and clouded judgment are hampering your ability for logical thought. Arg! Genshin Asugi's silence at his hearing can only mean one thing. There was no fabrication of evidence during the autopsy of his final victim ten years ago. Arg! <laughs> But if that autopsy was all above board, there'll be nothing to stop Lord Strongheart bringing this trial to an immediate conclusion. Thank you, Ryunosuke. If it wasn't for your frank words just now, this trial may very well have ended prematurely. Kazuma! What's this latest absurdity, Council? My lord, your reasoning is perfectly sound, but for one giant hole, I beg your pardon. You claim my father's silence was due to the fact that there was no fabricated evidence, but there's another possible explanation. You've overlooked the possibility that he had a reason for maintaining that silence. Objection! Silence that would lead to him being convicted and sent to his death. 
If the autopsy results were an invention, there is no conceivable reason why the man wouldn't have protested. Oh, those results were an invention, all right. There's no question of that. Or are you forgetting that two people with a connection to the autopsy have been assassinated? If I force the grievances I feel from my mind, I start to see you in a very different light. I think perhaps it's you who's been living in delusion these past ten years. M me? Cosmosama has created one last chance for us here, Mr. Naruhodo, if we can only shout who is a reason for his father's silence in his trial. A reason why the man would have said nothing, even though he was innocent. Could it have been part of some negotiation, perhaps? Enough rhetoric. The court must be shown evidence. What proof do you have that could possibly explain Asugi's silence in court? Uh, his, his will, I guess. Whatever was in it, I forget. It is with deep sadness that I accept my fate, uh, but I regret nothing about my chosen path. Uh, I guess. Forgot how to speak. Take that! <laughs> this is the defense's answer to that question. As I indicated before, my patience for rhetoric is growing thin. So you could have at least accompanied that penalty with an explanation of why that answer was wrong, because I think it was right. If Cosma Father's. Cosma. Cosma Father. If Cosma Sama's father knew that the evidence being used to convict him was fabricated. Why would he have said nothing in his trial? If it were me, I'd have protested my innocence till I was blue in the face. So if we're right about the autopsy results, there must have been a strong reason for his silence. Well then, perhaps... Saying nothing in exchange for some sort of clemency. That could be it. Lots of things here that have nothing to do with, with Asuge. The only thing that I have that has anything to do with him. Aside from the ring. Is it going to be that he wrote some kind of document that was then stolen, so he knew that someone else had that? That's way too roundabout. Um... Yeah, the only thing... Other than, other than his will, the only things I have that have anything to do with him are the ring and the sword. and Clint's autopsy.
Nope. No sword. Ring? Take that! No. Seeing nothing. So it's not the ring, it's not the sword, it's not the Asugi papers. Is it Clint's autopsy? Take that! No. Death! Is my lawyer armband, was that originally his father's? <laughs> is that what it is? I inherited it from Kazuma. <laughs> Does it have like, is that his dad's name? No, it's Kazuma's name. Always carrying my best friend's hopes and dreams on the right arm all the time. On the right shoulder aches. Son of a bitch. The conv- okay. Engage in some sort of negoti- like, is this it? Because he was negotiating with a prison staff, that means he was also negotiating, like, a as early as the trial itself? Take that! that was it! Okay, that's very roundabout. That's very- this doesn't really answer that question. <laughs> It's true that Genshin Asugi's silence during his trial resulted in his conviction, but that didn't actually lead to his execution. On the contrary, it led to his escape, an escape that was only possible because he'd been sentenced to death. Although I find it hard to believe my father would have negotiated in that way, the defense is correct. A fake execution, falsification... So he didn't, he didn't protest because he wanted to get sentenced to death so that in exchange for, in exchange for admitting to it. Oh, I guess it. Is it that he made a deal with Lord Strongheart? That he approached and was like, look, here's the deal. We're, we're going to find you like. We, we may or may not find you guilty, but if you plead guilty and get sentenced to death, we will we will have you escape from jail. Because that way it would throw up because male strongheart is is the the professor and wanted somebody to get arrested for it. Perhaps okay, maybe if I had maybe we'll see. Fake execution, falsification of a death certificate, and a jailbreak inside a coffin. 
clearly such an elaborate cl plan couldn't have been carried out by my father alone. That also made me just realize that the thing where I was like, oh no, he walked in and the guy was already in a coffin, that was... That was Genshin's supposed corpse, not Clint's. That he said, oh, I walked in the room and normally the coffin isn't nailed shut yet, but this time it was. He must have had the help of a collaborator from the judiciary. I have here the dismissal notice of the chief warder who was working in the prison at the time. The notes read, There are indications that the jailbreak was in planning prior to the inmate's incarceration. In other words, There were suggestions of some sort of negotiation between Mr. Asugi and the British government. for his silence in court, he was given an assurance that he would be broken out of prison. Yes, with that sort of clandestine agreement in place, I can imagine he would have kept very quiet. I would go further in... I would go further than that, in fact. I would say that the elaborate jailbreak of Mr. Asugi can be explained in no other way. Order. Order. First fabricated evidence, and now a jailbreak conspiracy. Of course, because it's all intimately linked. The prosecution wishes, wishes to summon new witnesses to the stand. Witnesses? People who can testify about the jailbreak that took place ten years ago. Ah! Governor Caden, and the poor chief warder of the prison. I won't allow this trial to turn into a Phoenix Wright trial. <laughs> to summon the governor of the prison after all these years. Oh, it wouldn't be any trouble, my lord. What? Father? My dear friend may appear a little rattle-pated at times. Ah, yes. Yes, you took the words right out of my mouth. The word rattle-pated was right in my mouth. You took it out. But I can assure you he is extremely thorough. He wired both Barclay and the local prison earlier. Asking Governor Caden and Mr. Vigil to attend the Old Bailey as a matter of extreme urgency. Mr. Sholmes did that? Oh, are you telling me that both men are, unless I'm much mistaken, waiting just outside the courtroom at this very moment? If that was true, then why did you sit idly by and let me throw rings and swords into the court's face? Couldn't you have just said, Naruhodo, just present the thing from the jail. I have the two jail people outside to be witnesses for us. It's like, no, it would have been impolite for him to speak up. My lord, you must permit this trial to proceed as you declared at its outset. You promised that we would stop at nothing and cover the whole truth behind these disturbing findings. Very well. Bring in the witnesses. Make no mistake. I, too, would like nothing more than to lay this business to rest once and for all. What do you think? Hour and a half? Will we be able to finish it up? Are we close to the end? Mayhap? Ow, I have a sudden cramp in my foot. It's okay now. Would the new witnesses state their names and occupations for the court, please? I, Barry Caden, governor of Barclay Prison. Everyone calls me- Oh, oh that's right! <laughs> I forgot that's who this was. He had fake stuff on. Everyone calls me God. No, your other persona, if you don't mind. Oh. I do beg your pardon. Of course. My name is Daily Vigil. I used to be the chief warder at Barclay Prison. The reason you've been summoned here to court today is to testify about the jailbreak of the so-called professor ten years ago. 
Losh! The professor, we already been through this before a decade ago. And the conclusion was that there wasn't anything untoward happened. A convict escaped from your prison, Governor. Hardly what you'd call nothing untoward. Ah, uh, well. The convict's death certificate was somehow falsified after he was allegedly executed, and he escaped the prison inside his own coffin. A plan of that complexity could never have been carried out without the help of somebody of influence inside the prison. Governor Caden, don't imagine that the passage of time will afford you any protection. If it turns out that you are involved in the plot to break Mr. Asugi out of your prison, then of course, the consequences will be very serious. In all likelihood, we are past the statute of limitations. <laughs> it has been ten years. In all likelihood, a capital punishment. Geds, hold on. <clears throat> hold on there, laddie. Witness, Governor Caden. Uh, aye, sir. You have a critical role to play in the public safety of our country. A great responsibility to shoulder. The significance of your testimony in court cannot be understated. Therefore, think carefully before you speak. And Prosecutor Asagi, if you threaten the witness again, you will be held in contempt of court. My apologies, my lord. There's no disputing the fact that an intricate jailbreak plot was enacted ten years ago. Clearly, you were both involved in some way. So you will testify before the court now and explain exactly what took place. Very well. Let the witnesses give their formal testimony. Tell the court everything you know of the plot to break Asugi out of Barclay ten years ago. It was the day that Japanese Jock was found guilty. The directive came from the prosecutor's office. Jock? Was he a jock? I assigned the... Now I must know. Does that mean something different in British English? Or, or Scottish English? <laughs> An enthusiast? Oh! Scottish and Irish English. A nickname for John, or an innocent lad, a country boy. Or British informal, usually offensive, a term used to refer to or address a Scot. In interesting. <laughs> We're learning all kinds of things. Thank you, dictionary.com. <clears throat> I assigned the convict to the chief ward of vigil air and put the plan into action behind the scenes like I was responsible for Asugi right up until the night of his execution but I knew nothing of any plot I didn't ken if there were some negotiations between the convict and the prosecutor's office all I did was carry out my duty for her majesty's great British empire Objection. I have it on good authority that Her Majesty only rules over London. Probably. Queen of London. That is her title. A directive from the prosecutor's office? Are you saying that that was the jailbreak plot? Aye, that's right. Who sent it? Who authorized that plan? I didn't ken that. You're saying you don't know? Listen, there was no thing about that professor case that was not unusual in some way. I didn't ask any questions. I just did as I was told. More than that, I couldn't tell you. I see. But if the jailbreak plan originated from the prosecutor's office, then one thing is very clear. 
As suspected, there were clandestine dealings going on between Mr. Asugi and that office. The jailbreak was promised in exchange for Mr. Asugi admitting to crimes he didn't commit. Well, we can't really prove that. <laughs> That, Council, is nothing more than speculation on your part. So, let me ask the defense. Uh, oh, yes, my lord? I fail to see how these witnesses have any more pertinent information here. Do you intend to insert, assert your right to a cross-examination? Absolutely, I have no intention of squandering a single opportunity, my lord. We'll be in court all day for this murder trial if we have to. It seems all you Japanese are fiercely tenacious. Very well, proceed, counsel. How many times does he say very well? <laughs> Given that he, I mean, we know, because of matter reasons, that he's going to be found out at the end. It's like... It, at any one of these times, he could have said, Nope, I am ending the trial, even though it is against popular opinion. And it's like, okay, you would have been suspicious then, but you still would have had a very good chance of getting off scot-free. As opposed to, if you, just, if you just continue saying, I am going to allow this, you're eventually gonna go to jail for, you know, for multiple murders and framings. And blackmails. So, Mr. Vigil, you didn't know anything about it at all? That's right. My only role in the scheme was as a scapegoat. That's right, isn't it, Governor? Some poor beggar had to take the rap for it. All right, then. Who else did know about the plan? I'm not the first idea, Lenny. My, old part, my part in the whole business was basically just dealing with the aftermath. But I wouldn't be surprised if there were other folk in the prison service who'd been given similar orders. So you don't know who else was involved? Aye, that's right. All I can tell you is that the night it actually happened, the person at the reins was Dr. Stevens. Dr. Courtney Stevens, or Dr. Seth, as she's known now. Why did I have to get caught up in such a terrible business? Hmm. Hold it! Did you not notice anything unusual happening in the lead-up to that night? Oh, everything was unusual. Exception after exception. After all, it was the professor. The man had terrorized the country as never before with his crimes. In order to hide his identity, he was forced to wear an iron mask over his head. Hideous treatment. The fellow was surprisingly docile for someone to take in the lives of five of the country's nobles. Being the chief warder, I was the only person permitted to approach his cell. I can still hardly believe that I was duped by my own country. I believe you jumped from the window of the governor's office when the jailbreak was blamed on you, didn't you? Losh, Vigil. I cannot apologize enough. No, governor. I don't believe you can. It won't change what's happened. And what else can you tell us about the situation, Governor Caden? But you've already acknowledged that orders came from the prosecutor's office to arrange for the man's escape. There must have been some sort of negotiation, it's the only explanation. I will be that as it may, I didn't care nothing about that. The witness stand is no place for telling what you don't know for sure, I, I can that much I do. Then I presume you also know this. Not telling what you do know is a criminal offense. 
So you were just following orders, is that it? I'm afraid that won't absolve you of guilt here. A man was still killed illegally, even if he was a condemned criminal. You may very well be found complicit in murder, Governor. So that's what it's to be, is it? Even with the threat of conviction, you won't break your silence. Hold it! Did you carry out the plan in its entirety? I, I did everything I could at the time. As you know, Genshin Asugi was shot dead in Logate Cemetery after the escape. Tell me, was that part of the plan too? My instructions were to do it getting the joke out of jail and nothing more. I can't tell you anything about what happened after that. Only personally I believe his death was the last part of the Whoa. Alright, uh do do you agree? Excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Vigil, is something wrong? Ugh, ooh, uh, yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? Are you, what? He's saluting now? What is this, some kind of Barclay convention? Everybody is saluting now. What Governor Caden was saying, was just saying, seemed to upset you. Did it bring something to mind, perhaps? For the last 10 years, I've completely blotted out the memories of that time from my mind. I was betrayed by my superiors in the name of my country. Just like Solid Snake. Or no. Just like Big Boss. Naked Snake. MGS3. No. Just like the regular boss in MGS3. That's the one. Just as my father was betrayed, it seems. But you see, Vogue, thinking back now, I really can't imagine that the shooting of Mr. Asugi in the cemetery was ever part of a plan. What makes you think that? Well, it just doesn't make sense, does it? To make the man admit to crimes he didn't commit with a promise of a jailbreak only to kill him in the end. That's treachery of the worst kind. But the point is, if the intention was always to betray him, why would there be any need for all the chicaneries of an escape? Ah. Yes, that's quite true. If whoever negotiated with Asugi never intended to keep his or her end of the bargain, it would have been far simpler just to let the man be executed in prison, as dictated by his sentence. It all happened in that vast chamber of secrets that is Barclay, behind the high prison walls. I suppose nobody knows what really went on in the execution room now. Yes, it's an unsettling mystery, certainly. Truth be told, that is a wee matter that's never quite made sense to me. If you believe there was some kind of negotiation behind the jailbreak between Asugi and a body at the top, it doesn't quite add up, does it? Governor Caden, I must insist you explain these doubts that you have by amending your formal testimony. Kids, hey, go on then. Didn't have nothing to bargain with. Not even this bargaining chip? Objection. I don't even get what this necessarily means, but okay. Confessing under oath to murder... Well, he didn't confess. He didn't confess. Don't say that. He, he just remained silent. Confessing under oath to murders he didn't commit, on a verbal assurance of later being broken out of prison? Genshin Asugi was taking an incredibly risky gamble. Very true. There was nothing to stop the British breaking their word and executing him behind closed doors anyway. Under normal circumstances, no man would stake his life on a gentleman's agreement like that. 
which means that Mr. Asugi must have had a trump card. Something that guaranteed he wouldn't be betrayed. Some kind of weapon. Havers! The feller couldn't have possibly had anything like that. But you know that he did, Governor. He was wearing an iron mask. That's a weapon. You could headbutt someone with it. Knock their teeth right out. The Asogi Papers, the name given to the last will and testament of Genshin Asogi. Ah! It turns out that Mr. Asogi was hiding his will in his cell at Barclay. Chief Warder Vigil caught him with it one day. You... You squealed, you... Did you, you wee rat? Did I not tell you to keep that a secret? You, you can't touch me now. Garg. When Mr. V um, ba first of all, Bailiff, Bailiff, get in there. <laughs> Second of all, when Mr. Vigil caught sight of that will through the bars of the convict's cell, Mr. Asugi pleaded with the warder. All right then, but what's on that paper? A last will and testament. This will is the only weapon that I have left now. A weapon. And after the convict had been killed following the elaborate pretense of a jailbreak. <laughs> yeah, you can't touch me now, ignoring the fact that you actually are. That document mysteriously disappeared, didn't it? Well, well yes. All the prison warders searched through the belongings in his cell, but... That will was just nowhere to be found. As I understand it, an exhaustive search was made for the document, which became known as the Asogi Papers. Governor Caden, I believe you ordered your prison staff to find it at all costs, didn't you? It? Would I be right in saying that you knew? You knew that the so-called Asogi Papers had the potential to make great waves somehow? Jinx, what the places are you blathering about? The will was found right and proper. In the fellow's cell where I said it would be. <laughs> but how can that be? Where in his cell? We all searched the place from top to bottom. Well, you did a proper job, you, you peely wally glute. You, you can't criticize. <laughs> you can't criticize me now, ignoring the fact that you actually did. I shoot it to you before, did I not, young lawyer? Yes. You did. I have the document here. It's written in Japanese and reads The Last Will and Testament of Genshin Asugi. Which means everything is as it should be. Not quite, my lord. You see, it was written in Mandarin Japanese, but Genshin was Cantonese Japanese. So, this is a forgery. Not quite, my lord. You see, there's an undeniable inconsistency here. What? What inconsistency? Mr. Asugi described this document as the only weapon he had left. Oh, it's missing a page. Duh. And yet this will contains nothing of significance at all. Nothing that would have given the convict any leverage. Are you suggesting, my learned friend, that the last will and testament stored at Barclay Prison all these years is actually a fake? As has clearly been demonstrated already, what went on at Barclay Prison was far from above board. <gasps> that last vilification by the defense was an affront to the entire British legal system. This absurd notion of a weapon is something for which we have only the former chief warder's word. The man could quite easily be lying, or at the very least sorely mistaken. What? No, I definitely heard him say that. I swear. Clearly, we need to get to the bottom of this. We need to know exactly what happened with these so-called Asogi papers. A waste of time. If the will was fake, where is the real document? Objection. 
Mr. Vigil was stabbed in the back by the judiciary ten years ago. He lost everything, very nearly his own life. And now you're going to do it again. You're ready to brand him a liar and turn your back on him without even letting him defend himself. It's clear that Black Clay Prison's hiding something. It's clear that they'll break his back and marry someone in the prosecutor's office. It's clear that some illicit negotiation took place. Is your lordship just going to gloss over the fence and defense? What did you say? I, I said, is it clear that your lord is going to gloss over the fence? I, I was quite clear. It sounds like I'm mumbling. <laughs> Now this is how you court. It would seem that a vocal few here are utterly blind to the truth. Very well, but <laughs> again with the very wells. Again with the very wells. He could have just said, nope, trial over, I am innocent. Let the witness testify again. Tell the court precisely what you think you saw of the convict's last will and testament. Yes, sir, my lord. As the warder responsible for condemned convicts, I attended to Mr. Ostergy and kept watch over his cell. The night after he was found guilty in court, he was doing something with that will in his cell. We turned the cell inside and out, looking for it after the execution, but to no avail. I only found out about the Asugi papers when a directive came telling me to impound them. The document was in the folds of a fellow's robe that was left in his cell. A kimono, I think it's called. In his kimono? That's... that's a lie. We searched every inch of the man's cell. We looked through all his clothes. It can't be true. Were you not satisfied with calling me a liar once, eh, you wee waffinger? <laughs> There's no such word as waffinger. No results found. No one has ever uttered such a word until now. Just, just me. Just me that just now. First time. May 9th. 2022. There's nothing you can do about it more. You don't have any hold over me anymore, ignoring the fact that you have a hold over me. O other than the hold that you like to take on my cravat, of course. Is that what you're going to do, is it? <laughs> are you going to give me a good shake again, or are you too scared? <laughs> Little and large. What a double act. What a, what a manzai routine, as we say in jolly old Japan, where I am from. We complied with Asugi's will as far as was possible. All of his personal effects were delivered to his family home in Japan. As a courtesy to the homeland of the most notorious killer our country has ever seen. And we were much obliged. I can confirm that all of my father's belongings arrived safely except for the ring. <laughs> I and you cannot deny the handwriting is that of your old man, eh? Yes, there's no mistaking that it's my father's brushwork. Really? And this last will and testament was the man's last weapon, was it? I think we can safely assume that the convict was merely prattling, knowing that his end was nigh. So, counsel for the defense, your cross-examination, please. Yes, my lord. So like I said, I, I think that it's probably that there's a page or multiple pages missing. That we just have the first and last page. And are missing the, the point that actually says whatever. Hold it! 
in Mr. Asogi's kimono. I ate the one he brought with him when he was locked up. Yes, he was permitted to have his personal effects with him during his incarceration, I understand. That's right. He was granted as much freedom as possible during the few days before his execution. Indeed. He had a number of items of personal significance, I remember. He was very reluctant to part with them. Some books and kimono. His sword. <laughs> His sword? Karma. The famous sword of the Asuge clan. It bears the soul of my family. I don't doubt it, but I, I wasn't really getting at that. Forget it being the soul of the clan. Could the man have had a more obvious weapon? Have some respect, Rinosuke. Respectful silence. The warders carry firearms at all times and the inmates have shackles around their ankles. He couldn't have hurt anyone with that thing. Still, he was allowed a sword, but no writing materials. Aye. He wrote that wheel before it came to stay with us at Bot Play, you see. Dr. Mikotobo was asked to bring the necessary Japanese writing implements to the prosecutor's office. A Suzuri inkstone, black sumi ink, and some Hanshi rice paper, no doubt. I was present when he wrote it, but I'm sorry, you see. The letters Is just look right? like a squirming mass of jet black earthworms to me. What else is he gonna say about it? Is he gonna say some more disparaging things? Is he going to call them moon runes? My father had a passion for calligraphy. He found the profound black color of sumi ink to be very soothing. I'm sure that cursive Japanese script must look utterly incomprehensible to English eyes, unlike, you know, when you just write it normal. Anyhow, it's a document that was found in the fellow's kimono. Despite the seriousness of his crimes, he was treated in a gentlemanly fashion until the end. When he was callously betrayed and shot dead in a dark cemetery in the middle of the night. Yes, the gentlemanliness of it is overwhelming. Get got. That testimony doesn't give much away. So this will really was penned by Kazuma-sama's father. I wonder what he could possibly have meant when he described it as a weapon. It's starting to sound very much like Mr. Asuki actually had nothing. But the plan to break him out of jail went ahead, which means he must have had some bargaining power. He must have been hiding something. It's the only explanation that makes sense. It's starting to sound like Mr. Asuki actually might have had something. Which is it, Mr. Naruhodo? I'm not sure, but I feel as if I'm on the brink of understanding all this. Let's listen to all the information again. Okay, we can't under we can't overlook the smallest details, such as Mr. Vigil uh, turning into a personal merry-go-round. Are you feeling faint, Mr. Vigil? Mr. Vigil! Sir? It was Scarlet, sir. What? Oh, I I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to blurt it out like that. Did he write it in his own blood because they didn't give him ink? Less swaying and more explaining would be helpful. Is it something about the testimony we just heard? Have you recalled something of importance? Something of importance? Possibly. Or possibly not. I'm unable to tell which way he's leaning, I'm afraid. My lord, the defense asked that Mr. Vigil be per permitted to supplement his testimony with this possibly or possibly not important detail. 
A mission granted. Go ahead, Mr. Vigil. Freaking talk. It was Scarlet. Hold it! Scarlet, you say? Well, yes, I mean, I only caught sight of it for a brief moment, of course. Even by the dim light of the cell, I remember thinking it was an unusual color. At the very least, I'm quite sure it wasn't black. Witness, is that really what you saw? Oh, uh, sir! Um, is something wrong, Lord Strongheart? I apologize. Continue. What do you make of that, Mr. Arahoro? For Lord Strongheart to be so visibly shaken in that way. Ech, dinna heaven, you can plainly see that it in here, and it's as black as the early hell's waistcoat. Well, yes, you're right. Mr. Vigil, I'd like to confirm one point with you. Did you actually see the content of the document that Mr. Asui was holding that night? Uh, well, no, I mean, there was no time. As soon as he noticed me there, he hid it behind his back. But it was definitely a will, was it? Yes, it was. That's what Mr. Mr. Asugi told me. The court need waste no further time on this matter. We have the will in question in our possession. There is nothing more to add. A will written in scarlet ink. What did Mr. Vigil really see Cosmo's father holding, I wonder? If you have an inkling, Mr. Naruhoto, you must present it in court at once. 